Hey, all right. So, Gabriel, you're for ABC Hoops Perfect. And you were a finalist on that show. And you used some amazing dog grooming, with some cool designs. How did you get involved in this whole world? I started when I was very young. Uh, I was 12 years old. I used to take my sister's dog to the grooming shop. And I just thought it was amazing what the lady did, that she played with dogs all day and made money, which is what a lot of people think about dog grooming, and it's not really the case. But I just really fell in love with dogs. And coming from Brazil, it really kept me focused growing up, you know, and out of the street. Um, and I'm very, you know, grateful that dogs saved my life. Um, and eventually, I started working with show dogs for AKC confirmation dog shows. And, you know, and, and then get involved in creative grooming competitions. And now I work on creating designs, trying to imagine how dogs could look like in the future. Yeah, I saw you on, I believe I did see you on a couple of shows. And I was like, so old, like, I guess I was enamored by some of the colors you use and you know, some of the cuts you were inspired to do on the dogs. What do you say to people when they when they when they ask you about how toxic those chemicals are on the dogs? Yeah, I understand the concern that people have when they see it because it's something that it's new for the general audience, but it's been around for a long time. And everything that I use is made for dogs. It's non-toxic, vegan, um, and it's not a human product. And, you know, the creative grooming is not done also when dogs are anxious or nervous. They're usually done only in dogs that enjoy the grooming process. So what's your, so who do, wait, who do you have there? Who, who's on your left? Oh, this, this, this is a day. <laughs> She's like trying to get her toy. Let me, let me show you her. Oh, 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 oh. This is nice. one. This is one of my dogs. My favorite She's fashion like bugging, colors. <laughs> She's bugging me to get the, my attention. <laughs> And this is my other dog. <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's inspired by uh, butterfly. Nice. Nice. Beautiful, beautiful colors. <laughs> so how did you, how did you like, whenever you see an animal, what inspires the cut and the color for the animal? Is it the personality or is it their owners? Um, okay. So with my clients, a lot of times they come with their ideas. But I, a lot of, some of the ideas don't match the dog's personality. So I try to guide them towards something that will go along. For example, uh, I want my dog to look like a dragon. And then I see like a very cute dog. I'm like, well, why don't we do a teddy bear version of a dragon, for example, <laughs> you know? So we like, we twist it to make sure it fits the dog's personality and the owner's personality. And yeah, I, I really like to be proud of my designs and proud of their expressions and knowing. The dogs don't really understand um, that they're a different color and they have a square head or triangle head, but they do understand the attention they get and the love that they get on the street and from everyone. So what are, what are some, I guess, some Halloween tips you, you were going to give us today about how we should, I guess, dress our animals up like? <laughs> well, you can always get, if you don't want to commit for a full design, you can always get the tail of your dog done or the ears done, which is an area that grows out faster and it's easier to, to take off the dye after a while. Um, and it's also not a big commitment. Um, there are products specific for dogs. There are products from All Paws that made very nice hair dye. And you can apply on the tail of your dog, let it sit for about 20 minutes and rinse off. Um, be careful with the mess because it is in my permanent, so <laughs> don't let it stain. Um, and yeah, I think that's a, a fun Halloween trick, you know. So are you, are you doing anything interesting for Halloween or dressing your dogs up like something else? <laughs> well, my dog is in a way of becoming a legendary Pokemon right now. And I already got my own Pokemon costume. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to be a Pokemon team. Nice. So what's next for you? What's on the horizon? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm expanding my store. I am, um, working, I want to work on, on developing a show for, to show the world more about how the, the, what's more for the dog grooming, you know, the artistry of the dog grooming industry. And 
And you know, every day that I go to work is a surprise. I, I'm very impressed how far with myself, of how far I've came by grooming dogs, which was a thing that people didn't really believe that it was a, a big deal and, and now it is. Um, so every day there's a new surprise. Can you explain to everyone who doesn't know how huge this industry is? Yeah, you know, the dog grooming industry, it has been proven to be recession proof because it's very, um, it's very, uh, dogs are an essential part of our lives right now. They're part of our families and grooming, it's part of their care. When COVID hit, for example, uh, all the stores were meant, we had to close when it started. But then as soon as people realize who's going to groom their dogs, it was lifted as essential businesses. So throughout COVID, throughout any uh, recession that I've experienced, the, gro the grooming industry never slowed down and is the only market that keeps growing throughout all of those um, recessions. And um, yeah, it is an artistry. You know, when you ask a groomer to make a round head on Buddy, your dog, it's not just a round head, it's a sculpture on something that it's moving and it has a mind of its own. And it requires a lot of technique and a lot of attention and focus to be able to do that, you know. Did you learn a lot of the techniques on humans before the dogs? No, I only work with dogs. I have no idea how to get a uh, person's hair. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty, good with, <laughs> you're pretty good with those scissors. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't think I could do that person. So what's, how, can you walk us through um, a day-to-day -day in your, in your in, I guess, in your grooming business? Okay, so um, I get there and um, I have a groomers that work with me and people that are dedicated to do creative grooming, people are dedicated to hand stripping, which is a technique for um, carriers for uh, shows um, and we get all sorts of clients you know we get clients across the country to come here to get their dogs transformed for any reason you know it's their someone's birthday it's uh, uh, because they have uh, a special event and you know it's the dog's birthday and they want to treat the dog with a luxury grooming service um, so we get a lot we get a lot of different stories you know coming from all across the country on the store. And uh, the, the people come with their ideas. We draw the ideas for them so they can visualize how it's gonna look in the dog as a consultation. And then we get to work, you know, it's a it's very busy. You can compare to like, I think like a kitchen um, rush of like getting all those babies ready because you know, all the dogs have their different personalities and we need to work around them and they're unpredictable. So. That's what makes it fun, I guess. <laughs> so how much would, a, I guess, a color and cut, like the one you have with your fur baby on your lap, what's the price range for something like that? Um, it starts around $450, and it can go up to $1,200, depending on the design. And how long do, does it last normally? Uh, it also depends on the length of the hair. So a uh, hair that is longer is going to last longer. So it may last depending on the coat renew, like for example, a poodle, right? Uh, if I do a giraffe design that you've seen on TikTok, in about three months, if you give the dog a haircut, the design will be gone. But if you do on a short coated dog, for example, on a French bulldog, that the coat doesn't renew as fast, it doesn't grow continuously like a person's hair, that might last up to a year. So it all depends, you know. What advice would you offer to someone that wants to be in your field? Wants to be in my field? Um, I would advise you to look for a mentor and work for several years with somebody that you really admire and you, you, know, you can get there, you can start studying and find a new mentor with like what I did uh, over and over because there are it is a very specialized type of work. You know, when you learn how to groom a Bichon really well, it doesn't mean that you know how to do a Fox Terrier really well because they're completely different. So find a mentor, work really hard and work for many years before you open your own business because um, there's a lot of nuances to dealing with an animal that you it only experience will teach you. You know, it is, a, it is tough in the beginning because it's a very 
hard job on your body. You know, it, the dogs are heavy. You, there's requires physical strength sometimes when they don't want their nails done, for example. Um, but you need to develop the right kind of patience, which is not just tolerate whatever they do. You need to be able to receive anxiety and neutralize that anxiety so you don't give that anxiety back to the dog. Because if you can't do that, it becomes a snowball. The, both of you become very anxious and it's not a good experience for neither of you guys. Can you share one of your most atrocious experiences? <laughs> atrocious. <laughs> well, one, of the most, one of the most scariest experiences that you've had being oh, too anxious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a dog where I was working in Brazil and it was this mix dog that was mixed with a mastiff and a toza which was a really 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 big dog and it was the dog was very sweet and the check-in was very sweet and i put the dog in the tub and the tub had a hook that you put the dog tied in the wall so you can give him a bath so he wouldn't jump right um the owner didn't told me that the dog didn't like his paws touch so i was baiting the dog and when i put my hand down to wash the paws the dog did not bark, he did not growl, he tried to bite me. And it was a hundred pound dog. So I, of course, got away from the tub. And then the scariest thing is that he was so strong that he snapped the hook off the wall and jumped out of the tub to get me. <laughs> that was the only situation in my life that I feel like I ever got scared of a dog. Because, you know, dogs try to bite here and there and you you handle it but I never had a dog try to jump out of the tub to come get me and that was quite scary I think that was the most scary experience I ever had you know I got bitten a million times but that one I was really terrified <laughs> wow that I mean I don't know how you do it because I can't even catch the pit bull I have a pit bull or actually babysit for a pit bull and the pit bull, she, it's very difficult to cut her, her claws, like you said. What's up? Are there any tips for cutting animals' claws? I know a lot of people want to cut their animals' claws. Um, I think um, the main tip would be to work in desensitizing them. Because look, the dogs, sometimes you don't have any idea what's going to happen. They just know something is vibrating and it's loud. And, and the nails are sensitive because they have a, a, a blood vessel inside and a nerve. So from the get-go, when your dog is sleeping and calm, if you can get like electric toothbrush, toothbrush something that vibrates and make that noise, and slowly like massage their paws. If they let you touch their paws for like one, one five, five, five seconds with a toothbrush, give them a treat, a positive reinforcement. Because then when they get to the groomer or you try to do the nails yourself, the situation won't come so strange. You know, he has his paws handled before. He has felt that vibration on his nails before. Um, and then it becomes easier to, to execute the actual nail trimming and, and the handling because he had the same experience when he was at home, comfortable with someone that he trusts. And that sensation is not new. And what about shampooing an animal? Is, are there any uh, tips you can offer for that? For shampoo? Yes, like um, in terms of like, what's the, some animals they get a little afraid when they hit the water run and they start to turn around. And you're like, get over yeah. here. But what, what yeah. do you have any tricks that you use? Like, do you use treats? Do you offer them something? You know, like a. Um, usually it's the same, it's about desensitizing them. So, mm -hmm. what you can do, you can put them, for example, the bathtub, a home bathtub, right? It's very slippery usually for a dog. Because they use, uh, dogs should be comfortable, they need to feel stable on the floor. A lot of dogs are even sensitive with hardwood floors. So when you put the dog in the tub, you, I would recommend you to put a yoga mat under. So to start, they're not already scared of slipping. And then if your dog is scared of the water, I would recommend you putting them, put the mat, put the dog in the tub, let the water run, but don't get them wet. If he can, and then, you know, give them reinforcement, Tell them like, oh, good boy, you know, and, and you can give them some treats and then get them out without getting wet. And the next day, do it again. If you do it for about 10 days, you're going to notice that your dog is going to jump on the tub by itself because you're going to be like, oh, we're going to go there and it's a great time. And then once he's at that point, you can get his legs wet and then let him out. You know, eventually he's going to really enjoy the process. Um, 
when you do this when their dogs are very young, when your dog is very young, by the time they're eight months old, they're very comfortable with the whole grooming process. If you see me grooming my pets on the table, they love, they jump on the table by themselves. They love the whole thing because they were used to since they were very young. If you let it to desensitize your dog when they're older, you're going to have a lot more work. It's almost like you're getting a person that never showered in their entire life. And then they're 10 years old. And then you're like, okay, now I'm going to shower you. <laughs> uh, it, you don't know what's happening, you know? Um, you know, you should, you should think that the dogs develop from being born all the way to being an adult in a year and a half, two years. So if between those two years, they had a bath three times, it's not enough for them, life experience for them to be desensitized with those feelings, you know? And what are your, what's the best way to dry a dog? Is there any concerns we should have with blow dryers versus towel dryer? Um, towel dry for short coat dogs is completely fine. If you have a long coated dog, you should blow dry it. Uh, of course, be careful with the heat, being too close. If it's comfortable in your hand, it will probably be comfortable to them. Um, and the reason for it is because if the hair is constantly wet, especially in the ear area, it can cause ear infections. Um, if the hair is wet, it can cause matting. You know, the correct way is that you should blow dry and brush the hair at the same time so you can stretch it and reduce friction so your dog doesn't get really matted. Um, and if the hair is wet for a long period of time, the dog can, can develop allergies and fungus because, you know, the skin being warm um, and moisturized, they might, you know, develop allergies especially if the hair, it's constantly wet. What shampoos would you recommend that we can purchase at our local pet store? My favorite uh, pet shampoo is called Hydra uh, because they have a, a big manufacturer that develops products specifically for pets and it's all they do. Um, great shampoo, great moisturizer, conditioner. They have great fragrances made for pets that are hypoallergenic. And they have a sensitive skin and face shampoo, which is a sulfate free that is safer for you to use around the face of your pet uh, at home without irritating the eyes. And what do you say to those people who can't afford to take their dog to a groomer like you um, for $450? Um, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, that, that's for the creative stuff. Um, <laughs> but I think, I think with the grooming, is that, well, to start, when you're getting a dog that has long hair, you need to keep in mind that that dog needs grooming attention, right? Um, and if you are in a tight budget or if the inflation is hitting you a bit hard, you can trim your dog's hair short. Look, 12 um, venti Starbucks are enough to pay for a basic um, haircut on your local grooming shop. So maybe if you hold on on the splurge of the fall and don't get that pumpkin spice latte, you can get your dog trimmed short, get the same length all over because that haircut is going to last you comfortably for two months. So it's easier for you to maintain the dog. Now, if you don't want to take them to the groomer, you can look for online tips of how to brush your dog at home and how to trim them at home. It might not look great, but it might be enough for you to maintain your pet, you know. So, so you're saying that it's fine if we use hair clippers in our dogs? And um, what about, is it okay for some of us to use some of the dyes? Um, yes, as long as you, with the dyes, it's just like uh, shampoo, right? You need to be, you should not let your dog lick themselves with shampoo or dye or anything while it's wet. Once you put, if you want to use the dye and you buy the dye from all paws, you can apply, for example, on the feet, let it sit for 20 minutes and then rinse off. You're going to notice that that spot is going to be colored. Um, however, the dye is like a cellophane. If you have a brown dog and you get a pink dye and you try to apply the pink dye on your brown dog, you're going to notice it's not going to be pink because it's not going to cover the brown. Um, but if you, have a, if you have like a white spot and you want to make it green, you can put the green there and that part is going to be green. Um, it doesn't work like the human hair dye. The human hair dye has hydrogen peroxide, which lifts the color, right? And then allows the color to work. The hair dye for dog is basically just a color stain. So whatever you have under, if the hair is black, you probably won't see anything. Yeah. Wow. 
because I was really trying to make my brown dog red. But I guess I can't anymore. <laughs> the red will work actually. On the brown, it work. Yeah. I almost got I almost got beat up though. I told one of my friends, she's a veterinarian. She's like, don't do that. I was like, I want a red dog. <laughs> I mean, I would say no to the whole red dog because I like <laughs> not like what something I would do. But if you did like just the tail, I think you'd be fine. Right, the tail, the tip of the tail. And she has like little white paws. I don't want to wake her up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You can just put like a little bit of dye, just let it sit and then it turns off. It does not cause, look, I've done by this time hundreds of dogs. We do hair dye in my shop every single day. I have zero cases of allergies. This dog that I was holding here, my, my, my black, the one that is black and green, he is 10 years old now and he's been dyed since he's two and he never mm -hmm. had allergies. Um, so as long as you do it well and you know you don't let the dog lick himself while it's wet, um, you rinse off very well and you use pet products, um, you're fine. The dogs are really cool with them. Are there any products you would recommend over the counter at the pet store that we could do, I guess, try out ourselves with a white spot, like you said, on the paw? Mm, I don't think Opa sells on the pet store, but you can find it online. Okay. Yeah. So like at Amazon, just go to... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend you trying manic tanning, any of those human dyes at all. Um, because those, the, like I said, we needed, a, we needed just like a, a soft stain to be on top of the hair. I wouldn't recommend trying to me and stuff. Is there anything else that you would like to discuss that we didn't speak to today? Any community oh. service involvement or... Your next project that we can be on the lookout for, your dog calendar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I have a lot of things on, on the works, but I can't talk much about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but as soon as I have some more news, I'll make sure to let you guys know. Well, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gabriel, for spending some time with us and teaching us about our dogs and how to maintain their coat. <laughs> no, well, thank you very much for having me. All right, have a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Oh.